Right, welcome to this video on decisions under risk and uncertainty. And uh, this is a topic which comes up uh, sometimes in uh, F5. Uh, isn't uh, such a popular topic as some of the others, but uh, will come up occasionally and we need to be able to deal with questions when they do. Um, relatively easy once we know what to do to get full marks on these questions, but we need to know how to approach them and what we're being asked to do. So, risk and uncertainty. First of all, uh, how does the syllabus describe the difference between risk and uncertainty? Uh, and the answer is that if we have an uncertain situation where there are various outcomes and we don't know how likely each one is, then this is called uh, uncertainty. Whereas risk is when we do have uh, some idea of how likely each outcome might be, and then we can start to assess the level of risk involved. Notice that if there's uncertainty, we really have no idea about the level of risk, so we can't start to assess the level of risk, whereas with um, uh, an idea of what the outcomes might be and how likely they might be, we can start to look at the uh, volatility of the situation and the level of risk and start to quantify it in one way or another. And we will also need to decide what our attitude is to that risk as well. So, what can we actually do? Well, first of all, how would we actually uh, assess different possibilities? If we had lots of different possibilities set up, how, how can we think about them? How can we decide between them? How can we um, estimate the risk involved? And uh, we're not going to be asked to do very much on these, but simply to know what they mean. So sensitivity analysis is where we make an initial estimate of what we think is the most likely outcome uh, by looking at all of the inputs, all of the factors which are going to affect the situation, and making our best estimate of that. Put them together and get a result. So, for example, we might estimate uh, the profit on a project by looking at the costs and the revenues involved and estimate that. However, what we then need to do is identify which of those inputs are actually uh, the most crucial ones, the ones which uh, we are concerned that if they were to change would change uh, quite dramatically the profit and hence maybe our decision whether to go ahead with the project. So. Rather than having a spreadsheet, we just alter one of the inputs at a time and see how much we have to change it by in order to make our decision about the investment change. And that sensitivity analysis allows us to see which of the inputs the outcome is most sensitive to, the decision is most sensitive to changes in. Scenario analysis is a little bit different although it's just moving a stage on. So the problem with sensitivity analysis is that we can only change one variable at a time. Whereas in reality, it may well be that many of the uh, inputs are different from what we expected, not just one of them at a time. So we want something where they all change. Trouble is, that then throws up thousands, not millions of possibilities. So what scenario analysis does is a halfway stage, and what it does is it says, okay, here's our most likely situation, now let's look at the worst case situation where everything is on the, uh, the bad side, in terms of our estimates, or uh, best case where everything's on the good side, and we can then calculate a best case possibility, a worst case possibility, and a most likely. Or if we want to go to extremes, we could have 10 different scenarios where this, the inputs were all estimated as being slightly different and put those together. We'd have 10 different outcomes. Of course, what it doesn't do is tell us how likely each of those three, if there's three, worst case, best case, most likely, those three actually are. All we've got is an idea of the spread, the worst case, the best case, gives us an idea of the spread of possibilities and hence the, the volatility there might be in the outcome. Simulation. Simulation moves on from that and says let's put those million different possibilities together. So what it does is it looks at each input and uh, designs a probability distribution for each one. And then using that starting to budget 
and thinking about the next year, put the budget together for the next year. That means in October you have to put together an estimate for an entire year 